Now, here's the one where you're not going to believe I'm actually going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, oral storytelling. It's kind of, it surprised me when I started thinking about sources of inspiration, and I realized, I mean, we should all be going to poetry slams. You know, it's incredible. Um, it's really relevant. I believe, actually, that oral storytelling has something to tell all game developers. Uh, and I know you're thinking I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, wh what could the most ancient medium of storytelling have to tell the most modern? Um, I haven't figured it all out yet. I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert, but I, there's something here, okay? Uh, and here's a good place to start. Uh, Jane Yolen's a novelist, and uh, she, she actually said the story uh, has two equal partners, the teller and the listener. Now, on one level, that's true of every medium. That's true of novels and movies and you know, TV and, and everything. So where do we go from there? Here's where it gets interesting. Uh, we need to modify, storytellers modify their stories based on uh, what the audience is telling them they need. There's an interaction there, okay? Um, the audience response, I mean, like I see some of you falling asleep, I see some of you leaning back, I see a couple of you smiling. I'm going to change my tone of voice. I'm probably going to talk much more into the mic to wake you up uh, because of how you're behaving. And storytellers do that all the time. No two tellings of a story are the same. All right? uh, they do their part, the storytellers, they do their part by communicating the content of the story just the way game developers do. You create the content. Okay? They do it through intonation. You can do it through sound. They do it through motion, the way they're carrying themselves and what they're doing with their bodies. I don't have a direct correlation to games with that, but you, you figure one out. Um, so the listeners respond. They lean forward. They lean back. Their eyes go wide. They gasp. They laugh. Um, and the storyteller responds directly to that. Okay? Um, and that changes the course of the story. So I love this quote. It's a two-way interaction a two-way interaction. I've been saying for years, in fact, I said this at Georgia Tech the other day, <laughs> that games are the only medium of expression, the only storytelling medium that's two-way, that is a dialogue between the creator and the player. And that is not true anymore. I realize that that is not true. Um, unlike any other medium, uh, oral storytelling and games are the only media that can do this. Let's put it that way. Okay. Games and oral storytelling are the only media where every experience is unique. If you make a game, I'm going to call you out right now and I am going to generalize horribly, but if you make a game where every player has the same experience, where they describe the same series of actions and events, you really just need to go make a movie, okay? Uh, listen to people talk about you know, a Tomb Raider game classic Tomb Raider, not so much anymore, but wasn't it cool when Lara Croft jumped across that chasm and almost didn't make it, and then, and then I grabbed on, they even say, I, I grabbed onto the edge, and I was starting to pull myself up, and I wasn't sure I could make it, and then I looked up, and there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and everybody goes, yeah, that was cool when it happened to me, too. What? <laughs> when in, in an oral storytelling tradition, and in video games, that doesn't have to be the case. We can create and work with, with uh, players to create unique experiences. No two playthroughs the same, okay? So I realize I'm, I'm repeating myself, but, but this is so weird to me, and it's probably so weird to you. I just, I need to go over it over and over again. I mean, the story emerges from interaction, cooperation, and coordination, just like a game. It's the same thing. Poetry slam, I'm telling you. Um, okay, and a good story so tell a response to changing influences. So same thing, I'm gonna zip through this. And this is my favorite. Neither audience, author nor audience can claim sole authorship of the meaning, right? Just like games, just like games. You could substitute the word game for story in any of those descriptions, the, those quotes, and no one would blink an eye, all right? Uh, none of you should blink an eye, all right? So that's a look at a variety of media, very, very high level, obviously. Uh, all of which we do well to emulate in some ways and move away for, in others. Uh, but for me, the most important part is the move away. And here's where I'm going to get really judgmental, okay? Uh, the key to the future of gaming lies in moving away from the ways in which we are like other media and moving towards things that could never be achieved in any other medium. 
right? The things that make us unique are the things we need to be exploring and exploiting. All the games on this screen do that, by the way. So what makes us unique? For me, there are four things, right? I've got, I've got like a, a two-hour lecture about this too, which I will not give you today. <laughs> but the highest level is there are four things that we claim as our own. We can, we can transport you. It's not Le LeBron James slam dunking the ball, and it's not Jeff Gordon driving that NASCAR car, and it's not name some Navy pilot. Um, you know, it's, it's you. Maverick. There you go. It's not Maverick. It's not, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> it's not Tom Cruise. It's you, right? It's always you. We can transport you and put you in the, in the place of the person doing the action. We can immerse you. We can make you believe in the most outlandish words. Um, we can make you believe in the things you're experiencing, okay? Uh, and when BR comes along, holy cow, <laughs> is that gonna get even more? No medium can do that other than us. We're the only medium in history that requires direct user participation to exist, you know? Um, if you don't do something in a game, Either nothing happens or you die, okay? Um, you have to participate. Uh, and without that, nothing happens, okay? No other medium in human history can make that claim. We are completely unique. And we're the first medium that responds. When we transport you, make you believe you're in a place, you do something, please turn off your cell phones. Um, when... When we do all that, and when the player does his or her part, we can respond, we can change. And other than that oral storytelling stuff that I'm just starting to figure out, we're the only ones who can do it. I mean, think about that. There are four things that no other medium in the history of humankind has ever been able to do. Why would we not focus on exploiting those things? Why would we want to be more like other media? I don't get it. I don't get it, okay? so. It's important to me that we acknowledge this difference, that consumers of other media, they observe and they interpret, and we are completely different. We engage and then players act. All right, so now it's time for my big finish. Um, well, almost. Um, why is this important? Why do I care so much about, about this unique stuff and being careful about what we borrow, learning what we should, not le unlearning what we shouldn't? I care because opportunities to watch a new medium come into being and develop happen very rarely, once or twice a century, okay? And we are in that moment right now. The opportunity to be a part of that coming of age story as games come of age, you are living that moment. And whatever place you have in the game business, developer, publisher, player, it doesn't matter. You can participate in that. Okay, that's what makes it special. You have a chance not just to witness it, but to be a part of it. So developers, if you're a developer, just honor what makes us unique. You don't have to agree with everything I've said about what makes us unique. Figure it out for yourself and then honor that. Don't just remake games of the past. Don't just imitate movies as much as I love, I genuinely do love Telltale games, by the way. Um, but honor what makes us unique, okay? If you're a publisher, Look, here's the deal. For all the testing and metrics gathering and all that stuff that publishers insist on and do so very well, 80% of games fail. <laughs> publishers, trust your creatives. If I fail 80% of the time, you are welcome to fire my ass, okay? We couldn't do worse. And gamers, just vote with your dollars, okay? If you want new kinds of experiences, Support the games that give you new kinds of experiences, okay? The ones that couldn't be delivered in any other medium. If we do all that, if we find the right balance of borrowed and unique characteristics, we really do have the potential to be the medium of the 21st century, and Pixar can, you know, eat our dust. Um, <laughs> if we don't, we'll, we'll inevitably become the bastard stepchild of Hollywood, and I, for one, don't want to see that. 